Today we are diving deep into the cutting-edge world of Honda's eCVT or Electric Continuously Variable Transmission. Now, the name might suggest that it's just another variable transmission paired with an electric motor. But guess what? You'd be wrong. This innovative system is a total game-changer. It's unlike anything we've seen before. Essentially, it reimagines the entire concept of hybrid vehicles by integrating not one, not two, but three different motors, a main internal combustion engine and two electric motors. Honda has remarkably eliminated the need for a traditional gearbox simply by ingeniously combining the operating modes of these motors. And you can find this marvel in a variety of Honda's new models, including the Feed, Accord and CRV. The eCVT operates in three distinct modes. First mode – Electric Vehicle mode. In this mode, there is a battery and a single high-performance electric motor. Everything functions just like your standard electric vehicle. Energy flows from the battery to the electric motor, you hit the gas and you are off. When you brake, the system employs regenerative braking to recharge the battery. This mode primarily kicks in when the battery charge level is about 50% and you are driving at speeds up to 60 km per hour. For the tech savvy among you, the Weber Auto Channel provides an excellent inside look at the intricacies of this transmission. In terms of its inner workings, for the first mode it's really quite straightforward. There is a differential to distribute torque between the front wheels, a set of auxiliary gears from component interaction and an electric motor to drive the wheels. This same electric motor also provides the system's regenerative braking capability. Let's shift gears and talk about the second mode, the hybrid mode. In this setup, the internal combustion engine is linked to an electric motor that serves as a generator. Imagine the engine operating like an outboard motor on a boat, restricted to a narrow RPM range and with optimal load. Now, focus on this graph. The white zone indicates the most efficient operating range for the internal combustion engine, while the darker area signifies inefficiency. For traditional non-hybrid cars, reaching this efficient zone is nearly impossible. However, when the engine acts solely as a generator, it operates under controlled conditions, making it possible to maintain peak efficiency. In this case, it functions at around 2000 RPM with a 70% load. So, what's the end game here? In hybrid mode, the internal combustion engine operates at its most efficient RPM range and load, spinning the electric motor generator. This electric motor generator, through an inverter, either directly powers the first electric motor, which turns the wheels, or sends excess energy to the battery. This stored energy can later be utilized by the same first electric motor to propel the vehicle, perhaps in electric vehicle mode. The second mode functions in detail. This electric motor is connected to the wheels. There is a gear that interacts with the internal combustion engine. And then there is an electric motor that acts as a generator. Note that the generator motor doesn't interact directly with the first electric motor. However, when the internal combustion engine kicks in during hybrid mode, the inverter sends a signal to the electric motor generator, prompting it to act exclusively as an energy generator. It either drives the first electric motor that connected to the wheels or charges the battery. The result? On these cars you won't experience any engine vibrations and there is hardly any noise from the internal combustion engine, as it operates at low RPMs under typical loads. The third mode – Internal Combustion Engine Mode. This usually kicks in when the vehicle reaches a speed of 100 km per hour. At this point, the second electric motor generator disengages. It still rotates, but it's no longer generating torque. Instead, the crankshaft of the internal combustion engine connects directly to the wheel drive, bypassing the second electric motor, thanks to a specialized gear and clutch system. By doing so, once the car hits a certain speed, the clutch locks, providing a direct link between the internal combustion engine and the wheels. This minimizes energy loss and brings the engine into its optimal efficiency range. 
Here is how it looks from the inside. The clutch assembly sits at the bottom. Liquid mediated locking ensures a solid connection between the internal combustion engine and the wheels. At high speeds there is a direct link between the engine and the wheels. Now let's take a look at these two charts. The lighter shade represents the most efficient operating zone for the internal combustion engine, while the darker shade denotes inefficiency. On the left chart, yellow lines represent geared shifts in a traditional mechanical transmission. According to this Honda graph, you'll only approach the optimal efficiency range when cruising in fifth gear on highway. Contrast this with an eCVT transmission which incorporates two electric motors. It's calibrated so that internal combustion engine operates most of the time like an outboard boat motor at fixed RPMs and with maximal efficiency. Only when the speed surpasses the 100 km per hour threshold does the engine directly power the wheels, reaching its ideal RPM range. The result? An ultra-efficient system with a gearbox and with minimal complex components. Thanks to the eCVT, we see lower weight, higher efficiency and consequently reduced fuel consumption. Moreover, the powerful electric motor provides impressive acceleration, while regenerative braking recharges the battery and lessens wear on brake pads. Additionally, since the internal combustion engine operates at ideal RPMs, most of the time its longevity is likely increased. Battery longevity also benefits as, unlike in fully electric vehicles, the charge level is maintained at an optimal range for durability, generally between 30 and 70 percent. And now let's pivot to real-world vehicles equipped with eCVT and see what they have to offer. Take the Honda Fit, fourth generation for instance. It can accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in around 9 seconds. In city driving conditions, the claimed fuel consumption is just 3.3 liters per 100 km. It features a 1.5 liter internal combustion engine that delivers 98 horsepower and 127 newton meters of torque. Meanwhile, the electric motor kicks out 110 horsepower and a whopping 253 newton meters of torque. That's twice the torque output of the internal combustion engine, and the power curve is generally smooth, providing pretty impressive driving dynamics. As for the Honda Insight, its declared fuel consumption stands at 3.8 liters per 100 kilometers. And for the Accord, it's 4.1 liters. And let's not forget the all-wheel drive Honda CR-V crossover, which adds another electric motor for the rear axle. Even in city conditions, it consumes just 4.5 liters per 100 kilometers. So, what are your thoughts on eCVT transmissions? Let us know in the comments. Have a great day and see you next time!